This is a Fluke 83 multimeter. First generation. After this came the Fluke 83 3. That would be the Fluke 83 Series 3. And then the Fluke 83 5. The Fluke 83 Series 5. Today we're going to break this down and I'm going to show you what it looks like inside. This is a quick tutorial on how to break it down and open it up and see what we have inside. What you need for this is a Phillips head screwdriver. We've got three Phillips screws that hold this together. So let's take it apart. We're going to do one at a time. So we've removed these three screws that hold the two cases together. So this rubber gasket is, seals these, the top and the bottom case together. So once you have all the uh, screws removed, what you wanna do is just hold it face up like this, and you wanna lift up from the top case, lift up, and keep the gasket towards the bottom case. Don't let it shift or move. So you want to lift up. So as you can see here, I've lifted up a little bit just from the uh, input connector side, only gripping here at the very top of the case. So I'm not, I'm not gripping at all. I'm trying not to shift or do anything with this rubber gasket. Once these detach, they never go back on the same way. Lift up from the bottom of the top case. And it has these little uh, uh, snap hooks here that snap onto the top. So when you're, when you're pressing it back together, you wanna put it on the same way you took it off. Do the, bat, the bottom squeeze it down and you want to gently, well not gently, but just firmly press it together, you'll hear it snap together. And there we go. So now we're looking at the inside of this Fluke 83. These buttons, they just kind of sit in here. So if you ever have a button problem, no big deal. Uh, find a replacement, swap out the, the uh, the buttons if you're having issues or if they're not functioning. Always try cleaning them first. You can see here's the 9 volt battery and here's the input connector and it's got the two fuses that are commonly used for the Fluke multimeters. Here's the 44, 440 milliamp uh, DMM fuse and then here's an 11 amp fuse. So we're going to disconnect the power source here. We're going to disconnect the 9-volt battery. Uh, make sure everything's OK there. So this is just the uh, battery connector that's uh, soldered into the main PCB. This one, once, once you remove the battery, this, this just sits in here, this whole PCB. So you're able to just lift, lift the whole thing up. Lift it up by the input connector. Just lift it up, just lift it up and out. Shouldn't be any resistance or shouldn't be anything screwed in holding it down. The Fluke 70 series are a little bit different. The Fluke 70 series do have a hidden screw under this fuse that's uh, screwed into the, the bottom case. So just be cautious. Don't ever try to force anything if it's not coming out. Just uh, inspect it. You see this one, you put it in. You take it out. It's as easy as that. Uh, this is the back of the unit. Here's the buzzer. It's back shield. And we've got this top case, this top shield. And the most common problem with these Fluke 80, 80 series meters is the LCD uh, having faded or ghosting segments. You can see the adjustments. Here is R21 and R34. Uh, pot resistors, and here are some other adjustments here. Uh, 
C2 on the bottom and C3, these uh, capacitors, adjustable capacitors here. So let's finish breaking this down. So we've got this Phillips uh, screw here that's holding down this back shield. So this one has these clips here on top. So we're just going to kind of slide it up like so. You see what I'm talking about here. It, it fits into the grooves. Before you go lifting up on stuff and trying to force things up, just, just inspect it. Give it a good look. You kind of see how it fits together and you say, okay. Here, but basically we're going to remove this top face plate off of the LCD. This is what holds it in. It just snaps on. So I'm going to unsnap it. I'm using my fingernails to pry up from the, the top here. So I've done that. It's popped up. So I'm, now I'm re removing this. The original pink elastomeric connectors in here. And this LCD is chipped on the corner. Gently, I'm just going to lift it up from this side. The other side's broken, but I'm just going to kind of well, lift it up. Now, these, these elastomeric connectors, they fit into these grooves. So these are old pink elastomers. And what happens over time, as you can see this one, it's just kind of bent out of shape. Over time, it's been pressed to down so far that it's, it's, it's like this. It's been pressed like this, so it's no longer making that tight connection. The bounce, it's, lo it's lost its bounce. Even these little tabs here on this top shield can affect the LCD clarity and the fading. But at any rate, you remove these, you just kind of push the uh, snaps back out. There's no screws or anything holding this top shield on. It really just snaps on. Uh, and so now we're looking at the main PCB. See the contact points here on the top and on the bottom? These are where the elastomer connectors, elastomer connector zebra strips uh, connect to. From this to the glass. So the zebra connectors touch this and connect it to the glass. And that's how the LCDs work. Here's the back side. So um, let's put the top case back on here. And remember, this one has the tabs that become that uh, become brittle over time. All the plastic on these become brittle over time. So we're just going to slide it back on. You see these uh, notches here in the PCB. That's where these tabs snap over those. So we're just going to line it up. Apply pressure, let it snap back in. You can hear it snap. So next, we're going to put the uh, back plate guard uh, sound buzzer. See these notches here. And then they go into these notches. So we can just align these up here. Just make sure we're lined up and just kind of, you know, press it into place snugly. And we've got this gold screw that was holding this part in place. Chances are you can just clean these. Actually clean inside here too. Clean the actual, both points of contact. Clean the elastomers with alcohol pads. So you take an alcohol pad here. Simply wipe the top and the bottom of the elastomer. Since we've got this open, I'm going to go ahead and replace the pink elastomeric connectors with these new gray elastomers. These elastomers, just do a quick comparison here. You see the pink one's a little kind of, it's warped. It's warped up and it's, uh, it's lost its balance, so it's not even as tall as the gray ones. And that's why the elastomers that's why the LCDs have the fade 
the faded or missing segments over time. We're replacing these, we've got it open. So we're gonna do that. So I'm putting these in like so. They just slide in and we are going to keep this uh, chipped broken LCD since it still works. And I'm gonna find a way to replace this uh, this meter at a later date. Now to put this on this faceplate to lock the LCD glass back in place, I'm gonna start at the bottom. I'm just gonna slide it over and I'm gonna apply pressure on all sides and I'm waiting for a snap. And that's letting me know that it's snapped back into place. So I'm kind of doing top and bottom together, but I kind of started on the bottom section before really applying any pressure to the top. We're almost there, we're so close. So now we're gonna put the main assembly back into the bottom case here. And again, it slides right in. There's no screws holding it in. It's just slides in and out, right? You lift it in and you can lift it up and reinsert it by the input receptacle here. And so now we're gonna reinstall the nine volt battery. And let's not forget to place our buttons in first. And now we're gonna put the top case back on. And remember how we took it off. We started from the bottom and lifted up. So we're gonna kind of reverse that. We're gonna start with the bottom and push it down. And then we're gonna look for the snap at the top. Just remember it's had those little tabs there that I showed you at the beginning. There we go. And before we screw it in, let's just give it a test run and see if it powers on. Yes, it does. Everything looks good. It still beeps, so we know everything's connected properly. Uh, we're going to reinsert these three back screws, the Phillips screwdriver and we just want it a little bit snug. We don't want to over tighten it. That concludes the breakdown and the reassembly of the Fluke 83 multimeter. Legacy series multimeter, the original. And I hope you found this informative. And until next time, we will catch you on the next video. This is Hardy, and I'm signing out.